So hello, my name is uh, David Preston. I am a professor of neurology at Case Western Reserve University. I'm also the vice chairman and uh, co-director of the EMG laboratory at University Hospital's Case Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, there's many things. As you know, medicine's really in a gigantic transition right now. So I'm very involved with healthcare policy. I'm also very in involved with resident education of how to teach things better uh, and more efficiently. And I'm very involved with uh, the field of neuromuscular disorders and EMG. Well, the book that we wrote, which was Electromyography and Nerve Conduction Studies, a, uh, a Clinical Correlation, really came about through several different mechanisms. The first is, when I was a resident learning this, there was no one good single book, at least in my opinion. There, was, there were several books that were very good that almost every resident bought. So for instance, there was a separate book on how to do, physically how to do nerve conduction studies. Then there were actually very good books about what nerve conductions met and how to interpret them. And then there were different books that were very good on electromyography. So when I was a resident, you needed to buy at least three or four books in order to get all the information you needed. So at least in my opinion, there was not a single book that could, that could act as a primer for all the key information you needed as a resident. The other place that our book really filled a niche is that it is said and it's completely true that EMG and nerve conduction studies are really an extension of the clinical examination. So the better clinical examination you do, the better EMG you'll do and vice versa. So what that means is to do this test correctly, you really need to understand neuromuscular disorders and correlate them. So for instance, an EMG finding may so show a certain uh, set of abnormalities, but those abnormalities get interpreted, interpreted differently depending on the patient's clinical history and examination. So this book also formed a unique uh, role in that it allowed the learner to actually learn the clinical neuromuscular disorders and also the EMG and nerve conduction studies and put the whole thing together. Well, I think it's actually changed things dramatically. So uh, many neurologists and many doctors really love books. We love to read, we love to own books, we like to have libraries, but the world has really changed. And it's even changed for me. Because even though books are really lovely, the problem is they're still big, they're still heavy, they're still bulky, and for a busy doctor or a neurology resident or a medical student, it's not going to be very practical to carry around uh, books um, uh, on the wards or in the hospital or in the clinic. So one of the amazing things about electronic books is that it allows you to uh, put it on your own device, be it an iPad or a tablet, and then literally have you know, 10 books, 100 books right with you on a device that weighs a pound and a half and you can have instant access to it. And most of us are using electronic devices uh, to actually communicate via, via email and also to connect to our electronic medical records as well as get information that we need to get. So for instance, in the olden days, we would have gigantic books of drug interactions or I would have to memorize all types of drug interactions. I don't do that anymore because now I have an app that it goes through all the drug interactions and I don't memorize it. I put those in when I need to know it and I look them up. So we're all using these devices so it makes a lot more sense to have your books on your device to make it easy. So for instance, you can read it whenever you have some free time, and especially doctors or residents or people in training, often their time is limited, so you really want to maximize that potential. So let's imagine you're in clinic and a patient doesn't show up because it's a snowstorm. No big deal. You have your iPad, you can open it up, and you can read the chapter on neuromuscular junction disorders and really maximize the use of your time.